Hi, hello. I know I fell off the face of the earth, um, but I got a ring light so you can actually see me now. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and my name is Maddie. Um, welcome back or ooh, I fucked that up. See, I've been gone so long, I don't even know what my own damn intro is anymore. Welcome back to my channel, or thanks for joining us if you're new here. My name is Maddie, and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year freakout tag, but before that I do want to apologize because I know like Webcomic Wednesday was coming back, I was making all these videos, and then I just disappeared. And I had a video I wanted to do on a romantic and asexual representation for Pride Month. I am wearing a Pride shirt today. Look at that. Coordinate it. But yeah, between moving home, getting a new job, graduating, uh, it was a lot. It's been a bit of a month and my mental health took a bit of a nosedive. So I wasn't really in a place where, you know, my depression's bad. Sometimes I start feeling a video and I just stop in the middle. My brain is like, we cannot do this today. So I apologize for that. I do have like a reading vlog that I filmed probably almost a month ago now. So I will drop that shortly after this video and then hopefully... If things go smooth when I start my new job on Monday, then I can get into a rhythm where I can pick up, you know, bringing some of those series back and getting hopefully weekly or bi-weekly videos out to y'all again. But I appreciate you sticking around if you're still here and for being patient with me. It's important to me, like, to be honest and open with you about my mental health because honestly, I don't think there's enough of that in the world. So, yeah. That's where we are at, but to dive into this video, I love doing the mid-year freakout tag. It's super cool to like sit down and go back over all of the books that I have read and you know really just take a moment to like think about some of the things that I forgot about and also to like challenge myself to think about the books from like a new perspective, which is really interesting. So as of today is June 22nd, I have read 54 books this year. Uh, which is kind of wild. And I do feel like this year is a little bit like last year where I haven't had a lot of like super pow books, which is a little bit disappointing, but it, it'll be interesting to go through it this way. So the first question that we have is, what is your favorite book that you've read in 2022? And for me, that has to be Tender is the Flesh, uh, which is a horror novel that essentially looks at cannibalism but bureaucracy pretty much what happens is animals are some sort of virus and they are all dying and if humans eat them then they get sick and the virus and they die as well so cannibalism has been legalized and we follow this man whose family used to own uh, like a meat processing plant and that plant has now transitioned to processing human meat and you know the realities of what that would take and how we distance ourselves from these people that we're eating at our own humanity can be a little gory because of like the cannibalism aspect for a lot of people but genuinely one of the best horror novels that i have read in a really long time and it is fairly short too uh so that book just like sucker punched me like I don't think I have read a horror novel in so long where I'm just sitting there like like complete stank face like don't know how to handle what is happening and that book did that for me it was a punch to the gut but also like scary how believable it was the amount of shit that governments like to get away with just by being like this is for the greater good everything is gonna be fine so yes, that's a story. <laughs> the next question is the best sequel, sequel, squeakquel? Yes, this is Alvin and the Chipmunks. I can't speak. Uh, best sequel you've read in 2022 and that has to be volume four of Finding Home, The Gardener. This is the one that I have a reading vlog on because I got my physical copies of this series in the mail and I binge reread them all at once and I did a reading vlog while I was doing that so I will have that coming out soon. I think it's like over half an hour long um, but I do have an old webcomic Wednesday video of Finding Home if you want to check that out. This is the last book in the series and if you don't know or haven't heard me ramble about this series it follows Chepe and Yannick the, the author clarified how you say these things uh, because that was a whole other thing. 
but it follows them as they, you know, run into each other on the path, and then Chepe offers to Yannick, he's like, okay, I will help you get to where you're going, and then they end up becoming friends and eventually falling in love, but they're also dealing with and, like, grappling with Chepe's history and overcoming, um, being in an abusive relationship, and this book does so much with, like, what is a healthy relationship? What is open communication? Like, what does ongoing consent look like? How do we, like, both recognize our faults to, like, come together and heal and be better people together? And I haven't seen a book that has done that so well and, like, tackled those issues, like, so head on. And this, ugh, like, I can't, I can't gush about this series anymore. I guess there's going to be a 40 minute video of me gushing about it, but yes, if you haven't read it, go and find it online. Please read it and support the author. They are incredible. I love them so much. This series has a very special place in my heart as someone who is also trying to recover from a shitty relationship. So a new release that you haven't read but you want to. My book for that one is this one, which can we just appreciate how gorgeous this cover is, and it is called A Magic Steeped in Poison. So to give you the synopsis, it's for Ning, the only thing worse than losing her mother is knowing that it's her own fault. She was the one who unknowingly brewed the poison tea that killed her mother, the poison tea that now threatens to also take her sister, Shu. When Ning hears of a competition to find the kingdom's greatest, I'm gonna butcher this, Shinong Shi, masters of the ancient and magical art of tea making, she travels to the imperial city to compete. The winner will receive a favor from the princess, which may be Ning's only chance to save her sister's life. But between the backstabbing com competitors and the bloody court politics and a mysterious and handsome boy with a shocking secret, Ning might actually be the one in more danger. So that is the synopsis. There is a lot going on here, but the coolest thing about this is it has a magic system based off of tea. If you know me, you will know that I love tea, and I just think that that's such a really cool and creative way to tackle fantasy. So this is a YA fantasy novel. It was, like, fairly well received when it came out. I was seeing it everywhere, and my mom and I were at a bookstore in a small town. I just happened to see it, so I picked up a copy, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet. So that is going to be going, hopefully, I don't know, somewhere in my TBR pile. We'll see. Next is my most anticipated release for the rest of the year. And this is interesting to me because I think my most anticipated release for the rest of the year is actually a nonfiction, which isn't very common for me to happen. But Gabor Mate has a new book coming out in September, I believe. And Gabor Mate is a Canadian doctor and probably like one of the worldwide leading experts on trauma. I read his book In the Realm of Hungry Ghosts, um, Close Counters with Addiction. I have a video on like books that I read on the opioid crisis and talking about that. And, you know, Gabor Mate is an expert on addiction as well. And that book is incredible. And it like really educated me and taught me a lot about my own life and like the relationships that I have with things around me as well, which was really fascinating. Um, but his new book that is coming out is called The Myth of Normal, and it deals with illness and health in an insane culture. So it's really looking at the ways that, you know, mental illness and chronic illness is growing rapidly and how, you know, that's a reflection of an abnormal culture that's actually like damaging ourselves and how we get to a point where like true health um, is something that we can work with. And this idea that what is normal equals what is healthy and that the norm is not actually healthy. Um, and I think that will be really interesting to read. This is something that I'm thinking about going into a nine to five job and being someone who struggles with that type of routine. There's these like weird expectations that we put on ourselves in society. And I think it'll be a really interesting read as somebody who is mentally ill and just also as someone who is trying to find a way to have money to live but like also take care of myself i think it will be give me some reflection and hopefully some ideas on how to balance all of that out so that was that next one and i'm gonna try and not ramble so long about this next one because i have feelings about it is the biggest disappointment, and for me this was Wolf Song, which is the first book in the Green Creek trilogy by T.J. Klune. 
and I don't even know how to give a synopsis about this book, but Ox is 12 years old when he meets this like kid on the street and then he finds out this kid is a werewolf and he learns all about, you know, their family's pack and alpha, betas, and omegas and everything that's going on with that. Uh, there's a lot happening in this book, um, including like a 12 year old printing like imprinting on like a 27 year old um people being able to smell when people are aroused or have banged someone which is a lot and just generally too similar to a megaverse fan fiction for me there is a lot there is a lot of a lot going on in here Plus the writing too, there's just like a lot of these like phrases that get repeated over and over again, which works, but then like to a point it's like, all right, we get it, we get the point that he, we get that he smells like candy canes and awesomeness or whatever, but yeah, it was just weird. It's weird that this, you know, relationship starts when this kid is so young and like Ox very much like sets up that boundary until he's like an adult, but it's just, I don't know, the him imprinting on him thing, the weird werewolf sex things, it's, it was not it. It was not it for me at all. Uh, and I pretty much was like crying as I was trying to get through it. I love TJ Klune, but that series, there is no way I would be able to read the rest of the books, which makes me sad because one of them has an ace character in it. Next is Biggest Surprise. I think my biggest surprise for this was um, The House on Needless Street, which was a book that I have a lot of conflicting opinions about, but like good conflicting opinions? I don't know how to explain that. But it is a book that uses the tropes of dissociative identity disorder in horror to try and challenge the tropes of dissociative identity disorder in horror, which was not what I was expecting while I was reading it. And so a lot of the like twists kind of got me where I was like, okay, great, we're doing this shitty thing of using mental illness as like, ah, people are mentally ill or scary. But then when it kind of turned itself on its head and was like, no, maybe the horror aspect is that this person isn't getting the support and the resources and the connections that they need to be able to heal was something that I thought was done really well. But it's hard when it's like also relying on the things that are damaging to get to that point to have that conversation but it was not what I was expecting at all when I picked up the book so I was very much surprised. I was very happy to like get to the end and see that the author had actually done their research and talked to people with lived experience before writing the novel because I think that's super important and that's something that doesn't happen in a lot especially in horror. There are so many damaging tropes with mental illness and horror. Next is favorite author debut slash nude you. I think what I'm going to go with for this one is Brian McDonald and I read the book Old Souls. This is by Brian McDonald and it is illustrated by Les McLean and it's a book that deals with themes of addiction and family but it's done through the lens of this man essentially discovers that there's a way to like remember and reconnect with all of the lives that you have lived previously and then he kind of gets addicted and pulled into like sacrificing everything to find out these other pieces of himself. So it kind of really deals with that idea of like searching for an answer and like how much are you willing to lose to go looking for something that's not really there and it's not going to change anything. The way that like the theme of reincarnation was dealt with was really interesting. So it was like, you know, when you start something and you just end up being like naturally good at it or it seems really familiar, that's something that like you had done in like a past life which was really cool and then I think the other thing that they talked about was like birthmarks or like weird aches that you have in certain places um were like tied to how you how you died in a previous life so maybe you had like a birthmark where you had been shot in a past life and I thought all of that like ideas and world building was really interesting but I guess Brian McDonald has this short book I believe on storytelling and like the like the fundamentals of storytelling that is like mandatory reading for anyone who works at Pixar. So that was something that was really cool having not known that author and this is just a book I picked up like out of a fluke 
from the a comic book store that I was at. So I think that was something that I was like, okay, this is definitely an author that I want to look into more and find out more about. Next is my least favorite, which is newest fictional crush. And I do not crush on people because I'm on the aromantic spectrum and this is difficult for me to understand. So I like to do character who I want to be my friend, but then the next one is like newest favorite character and I feel like those kind of go together. So I'm trying to like distinguish between them and I'm trying to pick two from like books that are new to me that like I've read this year that I haven't read before. I did read The Lord of the Rings this year so I do have to say Aragorn has a special place in my heart but also Merry and Pippin snuck up on me too. Honestly most of the cast of that really sucker punched me. I think the biggest thing was I always thought Frodo was whiny and like to be fair he's a little bit but the book does like a much better job of like dealing with the journey of the ring and like him and Sam's friendship as an aromantic person like really like sucker punched me in the gut especially when they're you know they just live together at the end and they have their their lovely little happy life which I think is pretty amazing so honestly I think that's where I'm gonna go like I would like Aragorn to teach me how to be as much of a badass as he is, but also I would just genuinely like them all to be my friends and to get to hang out with them in a post-Sauron world. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun, I think. Next is a book that made you cry, and for me that is And They Lived. I bawled my eyes out while reading this. This is by Stephen Salvatore. It follows Chase, who is starting at university, and he is obsessed with fairy tales. And he's going to university for animation, but he's also struggling with body dysmorphia disorder and, like, the eating disorder that he's had that is, like, related to that. And there he meets Jack, and Jack is a poet, and they end up falling in love, but they both kind of have things in their past that they're running from or not necessarily dealing with that ends up impacting their relationship and then finding their way back to each other. One non-binary character who uses pronouns that people don't think of as non-binary, because it's a non-binary character uses he him pronouns, and the way that that is dealt with is great. This is what happens when you have genderqueer authors writing books. A lot of the like food stuff, I have a really weird relationship with food, so it kind of like hit home to me. All of the story in general, the poetry was really good and the feelings and everything that they really explore and that idea of what is the narrative that we have about coming out and how does that impact people and how does that impact that they lived their, how they live their life um, was also really interesting and really well done. I think I copied down like a shit ton of quotes from it. I've got a lot to, to deal with with that one and I would recommend People go out and read it, but do check the trigger warnings ahead of time, just so that you know. All right, what is a book that made me happy? Good question. I don't read books that make me happy. <laughs> you know, I think for this one, I'm actually going to go Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory, which is a short story collection by Raphael Bob Waxberg, um, who worked on, wrote Bojack Horseman. And I think part of the reason this made me really happy is because it deals with love like that's the theme of it all of like the short stories in the book sorry deal with love but the book is not limited to romantic love which i so appreciate that it's this idea of you know fighting the amount of normative idea that you know romance and a monogamous romantic relationship is like the most valued thing in society and there's stories about sibling relationships both like complicated and you know amicable ones um, there's a great story that's like told from the perspective of a dog and like the love between an animal and their owner which is like really cool. There's stories about like every aspect of love too like how messy and complicated it can be and how sometimes we look for people when like we don't really need anything we're just trying to like fill some sort of hole in ourselves and like searching for for answers and for meaning and that we go looking for it in the wrong places 
um, yeah, there was definitely certain stories that like stuck with me more than others, but the writing and everything in some of the stories was beautiful. It was really well. That's, that's a book that made me, made me happy, mostly due to the way that it approached what it defined as love that it was going to address. Next is the most beautiful book you bought this year or was gifted to you, which I don't have in my hands, so I'm going to grab. I think this book is the most pretty one I've got this year, and this is the Fairy Loot edition of Heartstopper. This is volume two. Volume three is coming out this week, which I'm going to order, but I don't have volume one, and in order to try and get like the matching version of this on eBay, people are selling it for like $500 which is insane to me, but it's got sprayed edges. It's very shiny. And then under the cover, we also have like a shiny embossed image of Nick and Charlie, the side there, and then fun little, fun little end papers going on here too. Or the so this is just a really gorgeous version of this book. And I love Alice Oseman and this series so much. So I'm very happy to have this particular set because for a while I wasn't going to bother buying it because it's, you know, it's available online. But once I saw how pretty these versions were, I was like, okay, you know what, if I'm going to buy it, I'm going to go out and buy the pretty versions. Last question is what books do you need to read by the end of this year? What books do I not need to read by the end of this year, to be honest with you? I'm working on finishing the Sandman series by Neil Gaiman right now. So that's something that I want to get done before the TV show comes out in August. But in terms of things that like I definitely want to read by the end of the year, I think I want to make sure I check out Mason Deaver's new book, The Feeling of Falling in Love. Everybody in this room will someday be dead, checked out from the library that I need to get to. I have been loving Dead End Paranormal Park, so I want to read the two Dead Endia books that that show is based off of. And then I think everything else is just like, we'll get to it when we get to it. I don't think I have anything else that's like, desperately I want to read. Yeah, honestly, the only other one that comes to mind is 13 Stories by Jonathan Sims, which I believe is coming out in Canada this year, but it's already been out in the UK for a while. And Jonathan Sims did the Magnus Archives podcast, so I really want to check that out. But yeah, my TBR is getting slim, which is not something that I ever thought would happen. Like a lot of times when I go trying to find a book, I have a lot of like YA queer romances on there, which is fine, but like the way that I am, I can't always read romance. And if I try and read it when I'm not in the mood to read it, I will end up cringing so hard that I'm throwing the book across the room. So I'm trying to diversify it and like fill it out with some more books that are not that. So if people do have recommendations, send them to me, particularly like non YA. I need to. I need to break from it right now and I think in general just keeping a better more diverse TBR which makes it a little bit easier when I'm going to find things. I know that there's a reading challenge I'm going to be participating in August so I'm curious to sit down and try and find everything for that and see how my TBR is looking at that point in time. But yes, I will stop talking now. What is your favorite book that you've read so far this year? Leave me a comment down below and let me know that finished and edited reading vlog that has just been sitting on my computer for forever will <laughs> get it done and uploaded shortly after whenever I release this one. I guess I need to do a June wrap up, even though I never did a May wrap up. And yes, be gentle with me. New job. Fingers crossed things go smoothly and things will hopefully be back up to a more regular update schedule soon. Thank you so, so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notifications when I post next. Until the next video, stay kind.